Let's talk more uh, about the markets. Yesterday, the Dow closed below its 50-day moving average for the first time uh, since the beginning of June. At the same time, some key market drivers uh, have been uh, having a rough go of it. Apple's down more than 11 percent, the worst performer in the Dow. Tesla is down close to 20 percent. Join us now to talk about key levels. He's watching Mark Newton, Fundstrat, global head uh, of technical strategy. Um, in the past, Mark, when, when you see the real horses of, of an advance uh, pull back a little, it's not surprising, but it can presage uh, some further uh, problems. What do you think, with, with the leaders faltering right now, what's it say about uh, overall, the technicals for, uh, for the market? Thanks, Joe. Hi, Melissa. So, you know, we have seen a little bit of damage in, you know, the near-term performance of, of the leaders, so to speak, but you really haven't seen it in stocks like NVIDIA just yet. Uh, you know, as, as Melissa mentioned, Apple and NVIDIA are all both down, I think, about 12 percent from their, their peaks, but uh, really no substantial longer-term damage that would warrant that investors would want to avoid these stocks. You know, most of these have had substantial runs off the lows. Um, look, the market has changed in recent days, and it had been very orderly. We've started to see a little bit of a pickup in the decline. Uh, you know, however, there are a lot of reasons to suspect that we are close to bottoming, not that this is a decline that's just going to continue over the next couple months. Well, tell us what. Uh, so, what you know, look, in we... general, yeah, I would argue that, that Treasury yields are getting up very close to levels where they ought to peak out, and that would go really against the common narrative that, that Ackman and others have said. Uh, we've not technically broken out above last October's peaks, uh, either the 30-year nor the 10-year. I think that's important. Uh, technology as a sector has not really broken down. So in equal-weighted terms, if you look at equal-weighted tech versus equal-weighted S&P, you know, we've had a little bit of pullback. But really, in the last few weeks, it's more been discretionary financials and materials that have lost ground. Uh, tech, to its credit, has actually held up uh, fairly well. And I think that's important. The third is that sentiment has really started to back off in the last two weeks. We had pretty optimistic levels in late July. That has certainly retreated. And as Mike Santoli uh, commented on earlier, you know, all these sentiment gauges and really the oversold conditions are very close to materializing, uh, you know, getting close to levels that we saw back in March. So, you know, I think we have a week or two. I think Jackson Hole is really could be a pivotal event with regards to yields. Um, the Powell comes out hawkish and we see yields really start to turn down sharply. Uh, that should be a big positive for equities. Mike mentioned that, uh, you know, NVIDIA is down a little, but you really look at the advance and take yeah. some of the other ones you were talking about. I, I mean, Apple, 2.7 trillion. NVIDIA is now a trillion. Do, do, do you worry about the law of large numbers? I mean, is NVIDIA going to be 2 trillion? Yeah, look, I think NVIDIA likely gets up to near 500. It's tough for me to say that, that uh, you know, my skill set isn't about saying these stocks are going to double after the move that they've had. I think that trends remain very much in place. NVIDIA has certainly shocked a lot of people that wildly underestimated how it would do. I don't know that that, you know, technically, I think you have to say the same thing. It's really a, you have to use a different playbook with stocks like NVIDIA. We have gotten overbought. Uh, that certainly doesn't mean you sell it here. I mean, it hasn't broken up trends. And, you know, my own views, I own NVIDIA. I think the stock goes higher. I, I think it's in much better shape than a lot of those other, uh, you know, horses that, that we've been talking about. How about the, uh, I saw something earlier. When the NASDAQ, is at the same levels that it's, it's gone nowhere as an average for like three years, I think, almost, right, Mark? Well, look, we've had a pretty substantial move off the lows, and a lot of that has been carried by the, uh, you know, the Magnificent Seven. But the broader market really started to broad, you know, widen out. You know, we saw a lot of really good participation since May. I think that's really been important. Investors have recognized that. Uh, we did see a lot of short covering in July. So institutional investors have been slowly trying to participate. But, uh, you know, this has been a shot across the bow, I think, in, in the last couple of weeks, and people have gotten... Um, you know, a little bit caught off guard. So, you know, my own thinking is that, uh, you know, FANG and or NASDAQ is going to continue to show our performance because I think that yields uh, are closer to peaking. I think that rolls over sometime in the next, starting probably in the next few weeks between now and end of year. So uh, if yields really start to roll over, that's going to be very, very good for technology. In your view, are we uh, 
will we see new highs in, in the NASDAQ, in the S&P in, in the next six to 12 months? Yeah, I, I do think we're still within uh, what I would call uh, probably a two-year bull market uh, that started last October, uh, two to three years. And so this minor pullback, it's been three weeks. It's certainly caught some people off guard. Uh, but, but look, it hasn't really shown much deterioration in the larger technical structure with regards to uh, you know, just, just broader trends. We've seen just a little bit of a, a pullback. Uh, I think S&P gets back to, to 4,600. My own target for the year is 4,700. And, uh, you know, I think that the near term, 4,300 to 4,330 likely can provide some support to this recent pullback. I, I don't really see um, the reason why we need to go down to, as many people are saying, uh, you know, 3,200 or so. I, I think that's really not in the cards for, for this year or next. And if, inter if you're wrong on interest rates, would that change your view on, on all these other things? Well, look, if 10-year if gets up above 450, uh, you know, certainly that's going to spook the market. We, we saw signs of that when it got up above 4%. But I look at things like sentiment, Elliott Wave, uh, even DeMarc indicators. I mean, some of these are starting to show that the yields are getting close to peaking. So, uh, yeah, we, look, we need to see rates roll over. And uh, the economic data has been resilient. And so is the housing data. That's caused rates to really scream up. But uh you know, we're getting towards a juncture where that with the upside is going to be limited, I think, for yields in the near term. It's going to be worth buying treasuries and thinking that uh, the yields pull back. 